Jesus spoke of the reality of demons, the power of demons, but taught his disciples that they had the ability to exercise authority given by Christ over them and to live in victory. Uh, in Matthew chapter, uh, I believe it's 25, let's go there to be sure. Matthew chapter 25. And verse 41, the Bible says, Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. Here's a very important thing to include in your Bible study notes. Hell was not created for the human race. Hell was originally created as a place of judgment and torment eternally for all demons, Satan, and all demonic powers. But the Bible tells us that all who reject Christ will face the same torment. Jesus was quite clear in His teaching when He said, either your father is God or your father is the devil. And I know this is not something that most preachers would have the backbone to say, but I love you enough always to tell you the truth. Jesus said, you're either serving the Father or you're serving the devil. So as you're listening to me today, if you're a believer, you have absolutely no reason to fear or to be anxious about demons and demonic activity and so on. But if you're not a believer, your father is the devil. And if your father is the devil, demonic spirits have power over your life. They have the power to lead you into destruction and death and disease and curse and lack. The Bible says the enemy, Satan, demonic activity, Satan comes to steal, to kill and destroy he said, but I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I mentioned to you that I wanted to take you into the Bible and show you this war in heaven where Michael defeats Satan, Lucifer, along with the fallen angels. So go with me into the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation and the 12th chapter, Revelation and the 12th chapter, verses 7 through 9. Revelation 12, verses 7 through 9. The Bible said, Then there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. And the dragon lost the battle. And he and his angels were forced out of heaven. This great dragon, the Bible makes absolute definitive description as to who the identity of the dragon is. This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. So Satan is real. Does the Bible teach that demons are real? Clearly, and I've only given you just snapshots of various passages that bring clarity. I've helped you to see in your notes that the disciples knew the certainty of demonic activity, demon spirits. Jesus taught it. Every New Testament author except for the author of the book of Hebrews, which is unknown, uh, taught it, believed in it. And the scripture is clear that Satan is real, so it also follows, as we've read, that the angels that fell with him are also real. Uh, let me give you one more passage out of Matthew. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. And go down to verse 14, Matthew chapter 17, verses 14 through 20. At the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them, and a man came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, 
have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Then Jesus rebuked the demon in the boy, and it left him. I want to pause right there, and I want to clarify what I spoke about earlier, that in this particular case, all of this boy's afflictions, and notice that he was suicidal uh, in the sense that he oftentimes threw himself into the fire. He was self-destructive. Many times people who have self-destructive behavior or suicidal thoughts or suicidal tendencies, that is the work of the devil. That is not the work of God. God didn't give you a desire to be destructive. He gave you a desire to have eternal destiny. And so any type of destructive behavior, I'm talking about extreme destructive tendencies, it may well be that you are under the attack of the enemy, or in this boy's case, he was demon-possessed. Now listen carefully, no born-again believer can be demon-possessed. I have an entire study on that, and so I'll not take the time to define it today, but I want to be very clear in saying no born-again Christian can be demon-possessed. No born-again Christian carries a generational curse. No born-again Christian carries any curse. Every work, hear me, every work of sin and Satan and sickness and disease and infirmity and lack and poverty. Every curse, every work of the devil is destroyed through the repentance of sin and the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, whoever I set free is free indeed. In the Greek, that means free from all. Galatians chapter 3 teaches us that through Christ, every curse is broken, and the blessing of Abraham becomes ours. So when you pray with me today at the end of the broadcast, if it's the first time that you've truly recognized sin, repented of sin, received Christ, know that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. There is not one single example in the entirety of the New Testament Testament when a believer is involved in a deliverance service. If your church is teaching that as a believer you still have to be delivered from demonic activity and demon spirits, they are teaching false doctrine. There is not one single example in the Bible where Christ or the disciples or those ministering in the early church, not one, I repeat, not one single example of a post-salvation deliverance that was needed. Now, I'm not saying that Christians don't have battles. I'm not saying that the enemy is not a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Make no doubt about it. Even as a believer, the enemy hates you. Satan hates you because Christ is in you. His hatred for Christ, his hatred for the Godhead is targeted at you. The Bible said in Psalm 34, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Once you are a true believer, you've repented of sin, you've received Christ, you've obtained salvation, through faith alone, through Christ alone, through grace alone, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ breaks every stronghold, every snare, every trap of sin and Satan, and the enemy has no power over you. Paul the Apostle told the Corinthian church, thanks be unto God who gives us victory 
through the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe that and receive that wherever you're at, just say amen out loud and say, Lord, I don't have to live in fear of demons and evil spirits. I have victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 18, then Jesus rebuked the demon in the boy and it left him. From that moment, the boy was well. Afterward, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast out that demon? You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth. If you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move and nothing would be impossible. Uh, several versions of the Bible add, Jesus teaching them said, There are certain things that cometh not out, but by prayer and fasting. And so the ability to live in power over the devil requires spiritual commitment. It requires spiritual disciplines. It requires persistence in the word, consistency in prayer. But there is power in God once it's obtained, and it's through the Word. This is the sword of the Spirit, and the shield of faith quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked. All of the armor of God given to us in the book of Ephesians defeats every work of the devil soundly. But sometimes you've got to fight a good fight. Paul said that. He said, I fought a good fight. I kept my faith. Sometimes to keep your faith, you got to roll up your sleeves and fight. The enemy's not going to give this to you. You're going to have to fight for every inch of ground that you gain, but know that there is an authority in Christ to receive and to maintain everything in the covenant of God that has been promised to you. Question number two, what are demons? Demons in the most basic definition that I can give to you for your notes. Demon spirits are fallen angels. They were the angels in heaven whom Lucifer deceived and the Bible said one third of them. So one third of the angels in heaven whom Lucifer deceived rallied together as a coalition and led in a revolt and a rebellion against God Jesus said, I was there, I was an eyewitness, I saw Satan cast from heaven along with one-third of the angels. We'll read about that in a moment to come in Revelation 12 and 4. They fell to this earth. Satan, demon spirits are real. They reside on this earth. They are active as I speak, but those who are in Christ Jesus have power, authority, and victory over every demonic activity. Let's go into Revelation chapter 12. And again, these passages that I show you as we study the Bible together, highlight them in your Bible. Go back and read them again. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. The great dragon. Now, any time, listen carefully, any time you're reading the book of Revelation, the author of the book of Revelation, his name was John. He was imprisoned on the Isle of Patmos, which is a small island off the coast of modern Turkey. It was there that Jesus gave him the vision, which we have as the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible. But John oftentimes refers to Satan as the dragon. So anytime you're reading the book of Revelation, you'll hear John refer to him, Satan, as the dragon. And then he goes on oftentimes to say, that serpent, that devil, who is Satan, and defines him by name. Revelation 12, 9, John said, that great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Now, Ezekiel in the Old Testament, 
symbolically described this fall as well. If you want to turn to Ezekiel chapter 28 in your Bible, Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 11 through 19. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 11 through 19. Then this further message came to me from the Lord, son of man, sing this funeral song for the king of Tyre. This is a type of Satan. Give him this message from the sovereign Lord. You were the model of perfection, full of wisdom and exquisite in beauty. Lucifer was the most beautiful angel that God created. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Your clothing was adorned with every precious stone, red carnelian, pale green peridot, white moonstone, blue green beryl, onyx, green jasper, blue lapis, lazuli, turquoise, and emerald, all beautifully crafted for you and set in the finest gold. They were given to you on the day you were created, the day that God created Lucifer as this exquisitely magnificent, beautiful angel with internal and external musical abilities that no other angel was given. He gave him this lavish, ornate garment. I ordained you, verse 14, I ordained and anointed you as the mighty angelic guardian. You had access to the holy mountain of God and walked among the stones of fire. You were blameless in all you did from the day you were created until the day evil was found in you. Your rich commerce led you to violence and you sinned. So I banished you in disgrace from the mountain of God. I expelled you, O mighty guardian, from your place among the stones of fire. Here it is, verse 17. Your heart was filled with pride because of all of your beauty. There's a struggle I'll never have. Your wisdom was corrupted by your love of splendor. So I threw you to the ground and exposed you to the curious gaze of kings. You defiled your sanctuaries with your many sins and your dishonest trade. So I brought fire out from within you and it consumed you. I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching. All who knew you are appalled at your fate. You have come to a terrible end and you will exist no more. So again, let me clarify. When Satan fell from heaven, cast from heaven, immediately upon rebellion, one third of the angels had joined in that deception and were cast from heaven to earth as well. Where do we read about that? In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 4. Uh, Some translations refer to them as the stars that were cast out of heaven, but when you go down to verse 9 in Revelation chapter 12, it defines that it was Satan and one-third of the angels who fell with him. Uh, (laughs) 